American Time Use Survey, 2019 Results. For release 10 a.m. EDT, Thursday, June 25, 2020. In 2019, 24% of employed persons did some or all of their work at home on days they worked, and 82% of employed persons did some or all of their work at their workplace, the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics reported today. These and other results from the American Time Use Survey, ATUS, were released today. They include the average amount of time per day in 2019 that individuals worked, did household activities, and engaged in leisure and sports activities. Additionally, measures of the average time per day spent providing childcare, both as a primary or main activity and while doing other things, for the combined years 2015 to 19 are provided. For a detailed description of ATUS data and methodology, see the technical note. Working by employed persons in 2019, on days they worked, 24% of employed persons did some or all of their work at home and 82% of employed persons did some or all of their work at their workplace. On average, those who worked at their workplace worked for 7.9 hours, and those who worked at home did so for 3.3 hours. See Table 6, Workers Employed in Management, Business, and Financial Operations Occupations 37% and Workers Employed in Professional and Related Occupations 33% were more likely than those employed in other occupations to do some or all of their work from home on days they worked. See Table 7, Among Workers Age 25 and Over, Those with an Advanced Degree were more likely to work at home than were persons with lower levels of educational attainment, 42% of those with an advanced degree perform some work at home on days worked, compared with 16% of those with a high school diploma and no college. Workers with an advanced degree also were more likely to work on an average day than were those with a high school diploma and no college, 74%, compared with 66%. See Table 6. Many more full-time employed persons worked on weekdays than on weekend days or holidays. 87% worked on an average weekday, compared with 34% on an average weekend day or holiday. Full-time employed persons averaged 8.5 hours of work time on weekdays they worked, and 5.5 hours on weekend days and holidays they worked. See Table 4. Multiple job holders were nearly twice as likely to work on an average weekend day or holiday as were single job holders, 58%, compared with 31%. See Table 4. On the days they worked, employed men worked 48 minutes more than employed women. This difference partly reflects women's greater likelihood of working part-time. However, even among full-time workers those usually working 35 hours or more per week, men worked more per day than women, 8.3 hours, compared with 7.7 hours. See Table 4. On days they worked, women were slightly more likely than men to do some or all of their work at home, 26% of women, compared with 22% of men. See Table 6. Household activities in 2019, on an average day, 85% of women and 71% of men spent some time doing household activities, such as housework, cooking, lawn care, or household management. See Table 1, on the days they did household activities, women spent an average of 2.5 hours on these activities, while men spent 1.9 hours. See Table 1. On an average day, 22% of men did housework, such as cleaning or laundry, compared with 46% of women. See Table 1. On average, more people engaged in housework on weekend days than on weekdays, 41% compared with 32%. However, the percent of people who did food preparation and cleanup was about the same on weekend days as on weekdays, 59% and 60%. See Table 2. From 2003 to 2019, the share of men doing food preparation and cleanup on an average day increased from 35% to 48%, and the share of women grew from 66% to 70%. See Table 1. Leisure activities in 2019. On an average day, nearly everyone age 15 and over 95% engaged in some sort of leisure activity, such as watching TV, socializing, or exercising. Men spent more time in these activities than did women 5.5 hours, compared with 4.9 hours. 
See Table 1. On average, adults age 75 and over spent 7.7 .7 hours engaged in leisure activities per day, more than any other age group. 35 to 44 year olds spent 4.0 hours engaged in leisure and sports activities per day, less than other age groups. See Table 11a. Watching TV was the leisure activity that occupied the most time, 2.8 hours per day, accounting for just over half of all leisure time, on average. See Table 11a, socializing and communicating, such as visiting with friends or attending or hosting social events, accounted for an average of 38 minutes per day, and was the next most common leisure activity after watching TV. Individuals spent twice as much time socializing on weekend days 58 minutes as on weekdays 29 minutes. See Tables 11a and 11b. Time spent reading for personal interest varied greatly by age. Individuals age 75 and over averaged 44 minutes of reading per day, whereas individuals ages 15 to 44 read on average for 10 minutes or less per day. See Table 11a. Men were slightly more likely than women to participate in sports, exercise, or recreation on any given day, 21%, compared with 18%. On days they participated, men also spent more time doing these activities than did women, 1.9 hours, compared with 1.3 hours. See Table 1. Employed adults living in households with no children under age 18 engaged in leisure and sports activities for 4.5 hours per day, almost an hour more than employed adults living with a child under age 6. See Table 8b. Care of household children in 2015 to 2019, adults living in households with children under age 6 spent an average of 2.2 hours per day providing primary childcare to household children. Adults living in households where the youngest child was between the ages of 6 and 17 spent less than half as much time providing primary childcare to household children, 48 minutes per day. Primary childcare is childcare that is done as a main activity, such as providing physical care or reading to children. See Table 9. On an average day, among adults living in households with children under age 6, women spent 1.1 hours providing physical care, such as bathing or feeding a child, to household children. By contrast, men spent 27 minutes providing physical care. See Table 9. On an average day in 2019, among adults living with children under age 6, those who were not employed spent about an hour more caring for and helping household children than did employed adults, 2.8 hours versus 1.7 hours. See Tables 8b and 8c. Adults living in households with at least one child under age 6 spend an average of 5.4 hours per day providing secondary childcare, that is, they had at least one child in their care while doing activities other than primary childcare. Secondary childcare provided by adults living in households with children under age 6 was most commonly provided while doing leisure activities 2.0 hours or household activities 1.4 hours. See Table 10. Adults living in households with children under age 6 spent more time providing primary childcare on an average weekday 2.2 hours than on an average weekend day 2.0 hours. However, they spent less time providing secondary childcare on weekdays than on weekend days 4.4 hours, compared with 7.6 hours. See Tables 9 and 10. Additional data. ATUS 2019 data files are available for users to do their own tabulations and analyses. In accordance with BLS and Census Bureau policies that protect the privacy of survey respondents, personally identifying information does not appear on the data files. The 2019 data files are available on the BLS website at www.bls.gov slash slash data.htm. Technical note. The estimates in this news release are based on annual average data from the American Time Use Survey ATUS. The ATUS, which is conducted by the U.S. Census Bureau for the Bureau of Labor Statistics BLS, is a continuous survey about how individuals age 15 and over spend their time. Information in this news release will be made available to sensory-impaired individuals upon request. Voice phone, 202-691-5200, Federal Relay Service, 800-877-8339. Survey methodology. Data collection for the ATUS began in January 2003. Sample cases for the survey are selected monthly, and interviews are conducted continuously throughout the year. 
In 2019, approximately 9,400 individuals were interviewed. Estimates are released annually. ATUS sample households are chosen from the households that completed their eighth final interview for the Current Population Survey CPS, the nation's monthly household labor force survey. ATUS sample households are selected to ensure that estimates will be nationally representative. One individual age 15 or over is randomly chosen from each sampled household. This designated person is interviewed by telephone once about his or her activities on the day before the interview, the diary day. All ATUS interviews are conducted using computer-assisted telephone interviewing. Procedures are in place to collect information from the small number of households that did not provide a telephone number during the CPS interview. ATUS designated persons are pre-assigned a day of the week about which to report. Pre-assignment is designed to reduce variability in response rates across the week and to allow oversampling of weekend days so that accurate weekend day measures can be developed. Interviews occur on the day following the assigned day. For example, a person assigned to report about a Monday would be contacted on the following Tuesday. 10% of designated persons are assigned to report about each of the five weekdays. 25% are assigned to report about each weekend day. Households are called for up to eight consecutive weeks, for example, eight Tuesdays, in order to secure an interview. About the questionnaire. In the time diary portion of the ATUS interview, survey respondents sequentially report activities they did between 4 a.m. on the day before the interview until 4 a.m. on the day of the interview. For each activity, respondents are asked how long the activity lasted. For activities other than personal care activities, such as sleeping and grooming, interviewers also ask respondents where they were and who was in the room with them, if at home, or who accompanied them, if away from home. If respondents report doing more than one activity at a time, they are asked to identify which one was the main, primary, activity. If none can be identified, then the interviewer records the first activity mentioned. After completing the time diary, interviewers ask respondents additional questions to clearly identify work, volunteering, elder care, and secondary child care activities. Secondary child care is defined as having a child under age 13 in one's care while doing other activities. In addition, the ATUS includes an update of the household composition from the last CPS interview, two to five months prior to the ATUS interview, the labor force status of the respondent, and the employment status of his or her spouse or unmarried partner. For respondents who became employed or changed jobs between the last CPS interview and the ATUS interview, information also is collected on industry, occupation, class of worker, and earnings. Finally, a question about current school enrollment status is asked of all respondents ages 15 to 49. After completing the interview, primary activity descriptions are assigned a single six-digit code using the ATUS coding lexicon. The three-tier coding system consists of 17 major activity categories, each with multiple second- and third-tier subcategories. These coding lexicon categories are then combined into composite categories for publication, such as in this news release. Descriptions of categories shown in this release can be found in the Major Activity Category Definitions section of this technical note. The ATUS coding lexicon can be accessed at www.bls.gov slash two slash lexicons.htm. Because of the complexity of coding everyday activities into narrowly defined lexicon categories, coders use a comprehensive set of rules to guide their decisions. In order to capture useful and detailed information, travel activities are coded according to the purpose of travel. For more information about coding travel, see Exhibit 5.1 of the ATUS User's Guide at www.bls.gov slash slash addisusersguide.pdf. Concepts and Definitions Average Day The average day measure reflects an average distribution across all persons in the reference population and all days of the week. The ATUS collects data about daily activities from all segments of the population age 15 and over, including persons who are employed and not employed. Activity profiles differ based upon age, employment status, sex, and other characteristics. For example, in 2019, persons in the United States age 15 and over spent 3.3 hours per day working. 
By comparison, on an average weekday they worked, full-time employed persons spent 8.5 hours working. Many activities typically are not done on a daily basis, and some activities only are done by a subset of the population. Average hours per day. The average number of hours spent in a 24-hour day between 4 a.m. on the diary day and 4 a.m. on the interview day, doing a specified activity. Average hours per day, population. The average number of hours per day is computed using all responses from a given sample of the population, including those of respondents who did not do a particular activity on their diary day. These estimates reflect how many persons engaged in an activity and the amount of time they spent doing it. Average hours per day, persons who did the activity. The average number of hours per day is computed using only responses from those who engaged in a particular activity on their diary day. Diary day. The diary day is the day about which the respondent reports. For example, the diary day of a respondent interviewed on Tuesday is the preceding Monday. Earnings. Usual weekly earnings. Estimates represent the earnings of full-time wage and salary workers with one job only, both incorporated and unincorporated self-employed are excluded, before taxes and other deductions. They include any overtime pay, commissions, or tips usually received. Usual weekly earnings are updated in the ATUS for about 40% of wage and salary workers. If the respondent changed jobs or employment status between the CPS and ATUS interviews, or if the CPS weekly earnings value was imputed, this means that the earnings information could be out of date because the CPS interview was done two to five months prior to the ATUS interview. Respondents are asked to identify the easiest way for them to report earnings hourly, weekly, bi-weekly, twice monthly, annually, or other, and how much they usually earn in the reported time period. Earnings reported on a basis other than weekly are converted to a weekly equivalent. The term, usual, is as perceived by the respondent. If the respondent asks for a definition of usual, interviewers are instructed to define the term as more than half the week's work during the past four or five months. Weekly earnings ranges. The ranges used represent approximately 25% of full-time wage and salary workers both incorporated and unincorporated self-employed are excluded, who held only one job. For example, 25% of full-time wage and salary workers with only one job had weekly earnings of $650 or less in 2019. These dollar values vary from year to year. Employment status. Employed. All persons who, one, at any time during the seven days prior to the interview did any work at all as paid employees, or worked in their own business or profession or on their own farm, or two, were not working during the seven days prior to the interview but had jobs or businesses from which they were temporarily absent because of illness, bad weather, vacation, child care problems, labor management disputes, maternity or paternity leave, job training, or other family or personal reasons, whether or not they were paid for the time off or were seeking other jobs, or three, usually worked 15 hours or more as unpaid workers in a family-operated enterprise. Employed full-time. Full-time workers are those who usually worked 35 or more hours per week at all jobs combined. Employed part-time. Part-time workers are those who usually worked fewer than 35 hours per week at all jobs combined. Not employed. Persons are not employed if they do not meet the conditions for employment. Those who are not employed include individuals classified as unemployed as well as those classified as not in the labor force using CPS definitions. The numbers of employed and not employed persons in this release do not correspond to published totals from the CPS for several reasons. First, the reference population for the ATUS is age 15 years and over, whereas it is age 16 years and over for the CPS. Second, ATUS data are collected continuously, the employment reference period being the seven days prior to the interview. By contrast, CPS data are usually collected during the week including the 19th of the month and generally refer to employment during the week containing the 12th of the month. Finally, the CPS accepts answers from household members about other household members whereas such proxy responses are not allowed in the ATUS. While the information on employment from the ATUS is useful for assessing work in the context of other daily activities, the employment data are not intended for analysis of current employment trends.
Compared with the CPS and other estimates of employment, the ATUS estimates are based on a much smaller sample and are only available with a substantial lag since ATUS data and estimates are published during the year following data collection. Household children. Household children are children under age 18 residing in the household of the ATUS respondent. The children may be related to the respondent, such as his or her own children, grandchildren, nieces or nephews, or brothers or sisters, or not related, such as foster children or children of roommates or boarders. Primary activity. A primary activity is the main activity a respondent was doing at a specified time. With the exception of secondary childcare in Table 10, the estimates presented in this release reflect time spent in primary activities only. Secondary activities. A secondary or simultaneous activity is an activity done at the same time as a primary activity. With the exception of the care of children under age 13, information on secondary activities is not collected in the ATUS. Secondary childcare. Secondary childcare is care for children under age 13 that is done while doing an activity other than primary childcare, such as cooking dinner. Secondary child care estimates are derived by summing the durations of activities during which respondents had at least one child under age 13 in their care while doing other things. The time individuals spend providing secondary child care is further restricted to the time between when the first household child under age 13 woke up and when the last household child under age 13 went to bed. It is also restricted to times the respondent was awake. If respondents report providing both primary and secondary care at the same time, the time is attributed to primary care only. Weekday, weekend, and holiday estimates. Estimates for weekdays are an average of reports about Monday through Friday, excluding holidays. Estimates for weekend days and holidays are an average of reports about Saturdays, Sundays, and the following holidays, New Year's Day, Easter, Memorial Day, the 4th of July, Labor Day, Thanksgiving Day, and Christmas Day. Data were not collected about Christmas Day in 2016 and New Year's Day in 2017. Major Activity Category Definitions The following definitions describe the activity categories shown in this report. All major time use categories in this release include related travel time and waiting time. For example, time spent driving to the stadium and time spent waiting to get into the stadium to play ball are included in leisure and sports. Personal care activities. Personal care activities include sleeping, grooming such as bathing or dressing, health-related self-care, and personal or private activities. Receiving unpaid personal care from others, for example, my sister put polish on my nails, also is captured in this category. In general, respondents are not asked who they were with or where they were for personal care activities, as such information can be sensitive. Eating and drinking. All time spent eating or drinking, except eating and drinking done as part of a work or volunteer activity, whether alone, with others, at home, at a place of purchase, or somewhere else, is classified here. Household activities. Household activities are activities done by individuals to maintain their households. These include housework, cooking, lawn and garden care, pet care, vehicle maintenance and repair, home maintenance, repair, decoration, and renovation, and household management and organizational activities such as filling out paperwork or planning a party. Food preparation, whether or not reported as done specifically for another household member, is always classified as a household activity unless it was done as a volunteer, work, or income-generating activity. For example, making breakfast for my son is coded as a household activity, not as childcare. Purchasing goods and services. This category includes time spent purchasing consumer goods, professional and personal care services, household services, and government services. Consumer purchases include most purchases and rentals of consumer goods, regardless of the mode or place of purchase or rental, in person, online, via telephone, at home, or in a store. Gasoline, grocery, other food purchases, and all other shopping are further broken out in subcategories. Time spent obtaining, receiving, and purchasing professional and personal care services provided by someone else also is classified in this category. 
Professional services include childcare, financial services and banking, legal services, medical and adult care services, real estate services, and veterinary services. Personal care services include day spas, hair salons and barbershops, nail salons, and tanning salons. Activities classified here include time spent paying, meeting with, or talking to service providers, as well as time spent receiving the service or waiting to receive the service. Time spent arranging for and purchasing household services provided by someone else also is classified here. Household services include house cleaning, cooking, lawn care and landscaping, pet care, tailoring, laundering, and dry cleaning, vehicle maintenance and repairs, and home repairs, maintenance, and construction. This category also captures the time spent obtaining government services, such as applying for food assistance and purchasing government-required licenses or paying fines or fees. Caring for and helping household members. Time spent doing activities to care for or help any child under age 18 or adult in the household, regardless of relationship to the respondent or the physical or mental health status of the person being helped, is classified here. Caring for and helping activities for household children and adults are coded separately in subcategories. Primary child care activities include time spent providing physical care, playing with children, reading with children, assisting with homework, attending children's events, taking care of children's health needs, and dropping off, picking up, and waiting for children. Passive child care done as a primary activity, such as keeping an eye on my son while he swam in the pool, also is included. A child's presence during the activity is not enough in itself to classify the activity as child care. For example, watching television with my child is coded as a leisure activity, not as child care. Secondary child care occurs when persons have a child under age 13 in their care while doing activities other than primary child care. For a complete definition, see the concepts and definitions section of this technical note. Caring for and helping household members also includes a range of activities done to benefit adult members of households, such as providing physical and medical care or obtaining medical services. Doing something as a favor for or helping another household adult does not automatically result in classification as a helping activity. For example, a report of helping my spouse cook dinner is considered a household activity, food preparation, not a helping activity, because cooking dinner benefits the household as a whole. By contrast, doing paperwork for another person usually benefits the individual, so a report of filling out an insurance application for my spouse is considered a helping activity. Caring for and helping non-household members. This category includes time spent in activities done to care for or help others, both children under age 18 and adults, who do not live in the household. When done for or through an organization, time spent helping non-household members is classified as volunteering, rather than as helping non-household members. Care of non-household children, even when done as a favor or helping activity for another adult, is always classified as caring for and helping non-household children, not as helping another adult. Working and work-related activities. This category includes time spent working, doing activities as part of one's job, engaging in income-generating activities not as part of one's job, and job search activities. Working includes hours spent doing the specific tasks required of one's main or other job, regardless of location or time of day. Work-related activities include activities that are not obviously work but are done as part of one's job, such as having a business lunch and playing golf with clients. Other income-generating activities are those done on the side or under informal arrangement and are not part of a regular job. Such activities might include selling homemade crafts, maintaining a rental property, or having a yard sale. These activities are those for which individuals are paid or will be paid. Travel time related to working and work-related activities includes time spent traveling to and from work, as well as time spent traveling for work-related, income-generating, and job search activities. Educational activities. Time spent taking classes for a degree or for personal interest, including taking internet or other distance learning courses, time spent doing research and homework, and time spent taking care of administrative tasks related to education, such as registering for classes or obtaining a school ID, are included in this category. 
For high school students, before and after school extracurricular activities except sports also are classified as educational activities. Educational activities do not include time spent for classes or training received as part of a job. Time spent helping others with their education-related activities is classified as an activity involving caring for and helping others. Organizational, civic, and religious activities. This category captures time spent volunteering for or through an organization, performing civic obligations, and participating in religious and spiritual activities. Civic obligations include government-required duties, such as serving jury duty or appearing in court, and activities that assist or influence government processes, such as voting or attending town hall meetings. Religious activities include those normally associated with membership in or identification with specific religions or denominations, such as attending religious services, participating in choirs, youth groups, or unpaid teaching unless identified as volunteer activities, and engaging in personal religious practices, such as praying. Leisure and sports. The leisure and sports category includes time spent in sports, exercise, and recreation, socializing and communicating, and other leisure activities. Sports, exercise, and recreation activities include participating in, as well as attending or watching, sports, exercise, and recreational activities. Recreational activities include yard games like croquet or horseshoes, as well as activities like billiards and dancing. Socializing and communicating includes face-to-face -face social communication and hosting or attending social functions. Leisure activities include watching television, reading, relaxing or thinking, playing computer, board, or card games, using a computer or the internet for personal interest, playing or listening to music, and other activities, such as attending arts, cultural, and entertainment events. Telephone calls, mail, and email. This category captures time spent in telephone communication and household or personal mail or email. This category also includes texting and internet voice and video calling. Telephone and internet purchases are classified in purchasing goods and services. Telephone calls, mail, or email identified as related to work or volunteering are classified as work or volunteering. Other activities, not elsewhere classified. This residual category includes security procedures related to traveling, traveling not associated with a specific activity category, ambiguous activities that could not be coded, and missing activities. Missing activities result when respondents did not remember what they did for a period of time, or when they considered an activity too private or personal to report. Processing and estimation. After ATUS data are collected, they go through an editing and imputation procedure. Responses to CPS questions that are re-asked in the ATUS go through the regular CPS edit and imputation procedures. Some item non-responses for questions unique to the ATUS such as where an activity took place or how much time was spent doing secondary childcare also are imputed. Missing activities and missing values for who was present during an activity are never imputed. ATUS records are weighted quarterly to reduce bias in the estimates due to differences in sampling and response. Rates across subpopulations and days of the week. Specifically, the data are weighted to ensure the following, weekdays represent about five-sevenths of the weighted data, and weekend days represent about two-sevenths of the weighted data for the population as a whole and for selected subpopulations. The actual proportions depend on the number of weekdays and weekend days in a given quarter. The sum of the weights is equal to the number of person days in the quarter for the population as a whole and for selected subpopulations. Reliability of the estimates. Statistics based on the ATUS are subject to both sampling and non-sampling error. When a sample, rather than the entire population, is surveyed, estimates differ from the true population values they represent. The component of this difference that occurs because samples differ by chance is known as sampling error, and its variability is measured by the standard error of the estimate. Sample estimates from a given survey design are unbiased when an average of the estimates from all possible samples would yield, hypothetically, the true population value. In this case, the sample estimate and its standard error can be used to construct approximate confidence intervals, or ranges of values that include the true population value with known probabilities. If the process of selecting a sample from the population were repeated many times, an estimate 
made from each sample, and a suitable estimate of its standard error calculated for each sample, then approximately 90% of the intervals from 1.645 standard errors below the estimate to 1.645 standard errors above the estimate would include the true population value. BLS analyses are generally conducted at the 90% level of confidence. The ATUS data also are affected by non-sampling error, which is the average difference between population and sample values for samples generated by a given process. Non-sampling error can occur for many reasons, including failure to sample a segment of the population, inability to obtain information for all persons in the sample, inability or unwillingness of respondents to provide correct information, and errors made in the collection or processing of the data. Errors also could occur if non-response is correlated with time use. Publication requirements. Estimates of average hours per day and participation rates are not published unless there are a minimum number of respondents representing the given population. Additional publication criteria are applied that include the number of respondents who reported doing a specified activity and the standard error or coefficient of variation for the estimate. Estimates that are considered, close to zero, or that round to 0.00, are published as approximately zero or, approximately zero. For a detailed description of the statistical reliability criteria necessary for publication, please contact ATUS staff at atusinfo at bls.gov. Table 1. Time spent in primary activities and percent of the civilian population engaging in each activity, averages per day by sex, 2019 annual averages. Table 2. Time spent in primary activities and percent of the civilian population engaging in each activity, averages per day on weekdays and weekends, 2019 annual averages. Table 3. Time spent in primary activities for the civilian population by age, sex, race, Hispanic or Latino ethnicity, marital status, and educational attainment, 2019 annual averages. Table 3. Time spent in primary activities for the civilian population by age, sex, race, Hispanic or Latino ethnicity, marital status, and educational attainment, 2019 annual averages, continued. Table 4. Employed persons working and time spent working on days worked by full and part-time status and sex, job holding status, educational attainment, and day of week, 2019 annual averages. Numbers in thousands. Table 5. Employed persons working on main job and time spent working on days worked by class of worker, occupation, earnings, and day of week, 2019 annual averages. Numbers in thousands. Table 6. Employed persons working at home, workplace, and time spent working at each location by full and part-time status and sex, job holding status, and educational attainment, 2019 annual averages. Numbers in thousands. Table 7. Employed persons working on main job at home, workplace, and time spent working at each location by class of worker, occupation, and earnings, 2019 annual averages. Numbers in thousands. Table 8a. Time spent in primary activities for the civilian population 18 years and over by presence and age of youngest household child and sex, 2019 annual averages, total. Table 8b. Time spent in primary activities for the civilian population 18 years and over by presence and age of youngest household child and sex, 2019 annual averages, employed. Table 8c. Time spent in primary activities for the civilian population 18 years and over by presence and age of youngest household child and sex, 2019 annual averages, not employed. Table 9. Time adults spent caring for household children as a primary activity by sex, age, and day of week, average for the combined years 2015 to 2019. Table 10. Time adults spent in primary activities while providing childcare as a secondary activity by sex, age, and day of week, average for the combined years 2015 to 2019. Table 11a. Time spent in leisure and sports activities for the civilian population by selected characteristics, averages per day, 2019 annual averages. Table 11a. Time spent in leisure and sports activities for the civilian population by selected characteristics, averages per day, 2019 annual averages, continued. Table 11b. 
time spent in leisure and sports activities for the civilian population by selected characteristics, averages per day on weekdays and weekends, 2019 annual averages. Table 11b. Time spent in leisure and sports activities for the civilian population by selected characteristics, averages per day on weekdays and weekends, 2019 annual averages, continued. Table 12. Average hours per day spent in primary activities for the civilian population, 2019 quarterly and annual averages. Not seasonally adjusted.